Hey folks, so I'm skipping ahead to 9-17 while waiting for the goop to dry. And here you can see I had to custom create a folding uh, jig. Basically I took two pieces of oak and some hinges and folded skins. And you can see the one on the far right there is folded and then the one in the middle is, is before folding, uh, how they send it to you. I also had to construct some uh, cutouts that you can see in the, the middle right there on my bench uh, that are V-shaped that you'll slide down into, sort of like wooden clamps, if you will. Uh, and then when you do that, by the way, very important that you do that, but when you do it, save the insides uh, because you'll use those later on when you're folding the tabs. So this video is not going to be quite as long as the next one. I foresee the next one being incredibly long uh, because it is uh, Memorial Day, or was Memorial Day weekend when I uh, filmed this, and so I spent, gosh, what must have been 20 hours out in the garage working on this thing. Had a great time, and I alluded to this uh, in the previous video. It, everything is changed. It's lots of stuff has come, and it's going to be cool. I can't wait to to do the next one. But in the meantime, we're taking these things one step at a time. Here you can see I'm using the soldering iron to uh, heat the vinyl and pull off the pieces so that I can, you know, protect as much of the skin as possible. Uh, something that I, I just I need to be better about because, you know, I talked about scratches previously. It's no big deal, but it's one of those things that irritates me. So here you can see uh, that was the picture of it all clecoed together with the rib clamp blocks and the spar, etc. And here you're seeing me actually use the uh, jig. Looks like I'm hammering down on it. I'm not. I'm, I'm gently pressing uh, each time when I fold it over. And it worked out really, really well. I have to admit, the oak was a good idea, uh, getting good solid wood that uh, will stay flat and, you know, will not itself bend is definitely the way to go. Speaking of bending, though, before you put the trim tab horns on, uh, you have to bend either end on the, the outsides down. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm clamping it up to get ready to do that. And you'll see I'm using those inser internal inserts from those wooden Vs that I was talking about here, one inside and then one outside to keep it square. And you can see those tabs are what I'm going to bend. And then I'm using just a simple tap, uh, tack hammer and just ever so slowly going through and bending it. Um, I have a rubber mallet now. Uh, I didn't have one when I started this process. And honestly, I think it looks great. Previously, and even the instructions said to use a the uh, rivet gun, just put on really low pressure. Eh, tack hammer worked just fine. In fact, I think I, I think I saw some imperfections, to be honest. Um, in fact, I know I saw some imperfections that were as a result of me trying to use the rivet gun. I think the little tack hammer I have is the better route to go, or a rubber mallet if you have one or whatever. Just real soft, gentle, go slow. I mean, this is sped up to 500 times, uh, and it's, you know, a single picture every to uh, what two tenths of a second or something like that so at 500 times i'm taking a really long time to, to fold these over it's a it's a it's a long process uh and it worked out very nicely tracking hours tracking hours got to do both sides of course and getting them all clicoed up and stuck together just to make sure that they everything works and it looks good and then it's about drilling out the holes on either end of the tabs and putting in the clecos there that's what i'm doing here and of course, as with all things, you got to do it twice. And then read the instructions. Lots of instruction reading. Very important. I'm bending down. So what I was doing there uh, is bending down one edge. The bottom edge, you need to bend it ever so slightly. And instead of trying to use a jig to do that, I just bend it down with my fingers. It came out perfect. I was actually surprised how well it came out. And here, going through with the right and left trim tab horns, uh, which are the pieces that are riveted onto the bottom and control exactly where the trim tabs uh, sit. Of course, tons and tons of deburring. It seems like that's the one of the things you're going to do a lot of is deburring and cleaning up aluminum. Uh, eh, it is what it is. But once I get those all set up, I go ahead and do some 
test fits, put them on the part, and here's a picture of what those look like. You can see there they are. Easy peasy. And then it's about cutting out uh, the ribs. So the the ribs that go inside of and, I, and I, I lost some footage there. You can see where I skipped. I think the battery died. I didn't notice. But the ribs that go inside there are foam, which is pretty cool. And so you got to cut those out and you stick them in. And here I'm going through and, and uh, doing the dimples on the skins. So like I said, I, I lost uh, probably about 45 minutes of video because the battery I had put in had died. Uh, I, I grabbed the wrong battery and uh, I, I basically put a dead battery back in the camera. Whoops. So, oh well. And then I here I left the dang DRDT in the way, and you can't actually see what I'm doing. Uh, it's always something, right? But going through dimple in the skin, it's not trivial or not difficult. Rather, it's the same same process all over. Uh, and then it's going through and dimpling each of the spars, getting all everything all dimpled up and ready to go. Uh, and then I temporarily put the everything back together inside. Uh, inside each of the trim tabs and sit them aside while waiting to move on to the next step which is bringing over the uh, elevators themselves and getting those works now you do have to see it you see here I'm, I'm uh, machine countersinking one side of those spars you definitely have to do that up oh, there I remembered to move the DRG out of the way but you have to machine countersink one side uh, in order to get everything to fit correctly because it's going to have the hinge uh, in there, which I will eventually, I think at the very end of this, you'll see me grab the big long hinge they send you and run it upstairs uh, to cut it. Uh, by the way, I haven't been really focusing in sh on showing you all the cuts I've been making. I started too early in the very beginning of this process, but honestly, if you know how to use a bandsaw, that's all I'm doing is using a bandsaw, so... Uh, real easy but uh, yeah so this is 9-17 there were 10 steps on this particular page it's a single page that I did in this video and like I said there's nothing you know nothing hard here this was actually a fairly easy day um, saw me jump ahead there I think I went and got dinner and came back out or something I'm not sure I used a little bit of spray glue to put those uh, foam pieces in just temporarily uh, later you're supposed to use the tank sealer stuff which uh, we'll talk about next time and so here we go I think that's it I'm gonna put all this stuff away clean up my shop area and uh, can't wait to show you guys what's coming up next thanks